uh, dicastery for the doctrine of the faith has now put Catholics around the world in safety. They've dealt with a real serious issue. An 80-year-old retired bishop who writes tweets has now been punished. We can all breathe easy. Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano was declared excommunicated uh, on the beginning of July by the, the, the DDF. Uh, we mentioned this story before when he was accused. But I'd like to get your... Uh, I mean, it's clear what they're doing here, as I said, from my sarcasm. They, th this is someone who's accused Francis of covering up abuse, has accused the Vatican of corruption. And uh, like Donald Trump, they, they just needed to be uh, removed. He's most recently actually said, come out and said he has evidence that Francis not only covered up abuse, but has been engaged in it himself. And the sources I've talked to in, the, in, the, in Rome are saying that was the final straw. They basically said, we've got to silence this, this guy. But I want to show you, because I, I found this really interesting looking at uh, what happened. The Vatican issued a press release about this supposed uh, excommunication. I want to direct your attention to this paragraph because it lists sort of three basis for uh, the excommunication. His refusing communion with Pope Francis, communion with members of the church that are in communion with him, and then at the end, denying essentially the, the authority, magisterial authority of concilio, right, ecumenico, vaticano, too. So even if you don't know Italian, Vatican II, right there. Interestingly, uh, the Vatican did not publish the legal document where the, the opinion, in, in our terms, uh, where he is uh, uh, declared this. But Archbishop Vigano has himself posted it. Vatican has not denied it. And here in the document is the actual accusation against him, paragraph 12. And again, even if you don't know Italian, you can see what's missing. Nothing about denying the authority of the Second Vatican Council. They regard the delict of schism, the delict of schism which yes. involves the public affirmations, uh, which result in refusal of submission to the, uh, the Supreme Pontiff oh, and of communion with the members of the church subject to him. That's what it Which says are the following. first two listed in the press release I showed you, but the, the Vatican press office added in the third. Now, again, my read of this legally, I mean, they went, uh, we'll talk about legally what they did. I think it was way off, but. Legally, I think they knew they couldn't condemn him uh, for schism, for statements against Vatican II directly. So they didn't actually put it in the legal document. But the spin they want to put on it is message to Catholics, question Vatican II, you get excommunicated. That's what I read what's going on here. Well, in a sense, he, he is a schismatic from the new religion Francis is attempting to impose upon the church. <laughs> So really what they should, they should just issue an anathema. Whoever says that the Catholic faith is unchanging and cannot be altered in its articles by the Supreme Pontiff at his will, let him be anathema. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the phenomenon of mobilism noted by Romano Amerio in his masterwork, Iota Unum, that we're always moving somewhere, somewhere new, but we never get there. And in the process, everything is always changing. We're always listening to the Holy Spirit. That's what all of this, this Senado process baloney is about, which is basically just Francis musing about what he would like to do next and pretending that this is the Holy Spirit speaking through the Synod that he totally controls and manipulates from start to finish. So we have a dictator pope, and now, like any dictator, he wants to incarcerate, in this case by excommunication, his political, i.e. ecclesiastical opposition. So once again, we see a parallel between the church and the state. Funny how that always comes up, huh, Brian? Uh, it is funny. So goes the church, so goes the world. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but it, it's interesting. I like to talk because many people have said, well, what is going on? Does he really deserve this punishment? And, and it, it's interesting. I mean, he clearly has raised serious objections to whether or not you know, Francis is actually exercising authority as the Pope. But I have to say, I, I quote you a lot, uh, New York conference of John, another conference of John Rowell. Uh, you once quipped, you've met one state of a contest, you've met one state of a contest. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I think you're right. The label really means nothing. What exactly Vigano thinks? And, and I have to tell you, I've, we have some, we've conducting, I'm conducting an interview with him through the email, getting some responses. He, his opinion, his position is very complicated. I mean, he's, Raising objections to irregularities in the conclave, which, frankly, is a role of a bishop to say there may be smoke here, 
right? He's raising objections to what Francis has done. He's expressed his opinion uh, about Francis. But, you know, he doesn't seem to be taking a classic state of a contest position. The hierarchy sees there's never been a pope. But, but frankly, even if he did, and I'm no state of a contest, I've never taken that position. I argue against, I've argued with them publicly about some of the theories. But whatever they are, I've never accused any of them being heretics or schismatics. Uh, because to say, I, I have got, there's some serious questions the church needs to, and he said, I'm urging bishops to look into whether a canonical procedure should be started. To deny that a particular person or say there's factual issues around who is the pope is legally very different from schism essentially saying, I don't submit to any pope, that there's no pope. Uh, doesn't have the authority there. And and again, this legal opinion doesn't doesn't discuss that issue at all. Well, let's just assume he was a state of a contest hard stop. That's it. Yes. Just not, he's not the Pope. Well, he can't be accused of schism if he doesn't think right. that the <laughs> occupant of the chair of Peter is in fact the Pope, but that there was some problem with his election, or that he yes. somehow lost his office on account of heresy. I've always said the state of a contest question is a big waste of time because yes. in order to convict the Pope of heresy, either before or after his ascension to office, you would need a canonical trial like anyone else has. Like even they gave to Vigano, even if it was a, a vain form of right. a trial when he refused to appear. And you can't put the Pope on trial, so how are you going to prove it? You can't prove obstinacy unless you establish yes. that he knows that he's espousing heresy, and then once he is shown to know it, refuses to retract it. He may think in his modernist mind that he is actually a champion of Proper orthodoxy. Who knows? But yeah. practically speaking, he might as well be an anti-pope because of what he's doing. When even Protestants satirize him as an anti-Catholic pope, go over to Babylon B and search for any headline on yeah. Pope Francis, you know that we, we're dealing with a pope unlike any other in church history. The worst, clearly, in terms of doctrine and practice in 2,000 years. We've had corrupt popes, we've had popes who bought their offices, we've had popes who sold their offices, we've had popes who fostered children out of wedlock, we've had all of that. But we've never had a pope who actually is an avowed enemy of Roman Catholicism. He just doesn't like the faith that has been handed down to us, and he would like to change it. As he puts it, we don't need a new church, we just need a different church. That statement alone qualifies yeah. him as the worst pope in 2,000 years. What pope ever said anything so utterly nonsensical and dangerous at the same time? A absolutely.